to Sigma Solver guys. Before I start the video, I want you guys to smash the like button and if you are new here then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss an update. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to discuss a problem on minimum distance classifier. This is a typical uh, problem in computer vision and uh, can be used in many other domains as well because this is a classification problem so in machine learning as well you can expect these kinds of uh, problems to arrive so we are given two pattern classes extracted from the samples of one image data set and are denoted by omega 1 and omega 2 respectively and have the mean vectors m1 6.5 comma 3.2 transpose and m2 2 comma 1.5 transpose compute the decision boundary using minimum distance classifier. So there are many technical terms, we will go through it one by one. First is two pattern classes. Pattern classes here denotes pattern vectors. So in image as you know that when images are stored in computer, they are stored in num numbers format, right? They are not stored in colors, they are stored in numbers. And for each pixel, there has to be an array of numbers that denote its particular color right rgb values so those data sets are for colors similarly there will be uh, vectors for position that denote the position of the pixel so those are pattern vectors right so we are given two pattern classes means there will be a classification problem this indicates that and where there will be only two distinct classes since we are given just two pattern two types of patterns so we can only classify that into two classes if there had been like three pattern classes so there would have been like three classes are there and for each pattern vector we need to classify it in it into one of the three classes so that is one thing that we are given only two classes in this example and the second thing is they should be mutually exclusive so what is meant by this mutually exclusive so related to the classification problems of uh, machine learning so in machine learning we have uh, cl have to classify emails into spam and non spam so those are like clearly mutually exclusive one does not belong to the another class in any sense so that is a thing and similarly positive or negative right this can be another example that they do not overlap so they are mutually exclusive now I want you guys to uh, write in the comment section that which type of classes do you think are non-mutually exclusive. So for that we cannot perform this decision boundary minimum distance classifier thing. So I will give an example for that. If we consider a retail shop and try to find out the frequent buyers and the discount seekers, there are two types of buyers. One is a frequent buyer of the shop and one another is a discount seeker that whenever uh, he sees a discount on the shop he arrives at the shop and purchases the stuff so in this uh, regard we cannot classify them as mutually exclusive classes there can be a person who uh, enjoys discount as well as well as is a frequent buyer right so then we cannot classify it with this uh, format we need to use something else maybe we will use fuzzy logic or something else but we cannot use a minimum distance classifier in this regard perfect now we go to the next part okay now the next part is we are given mean vectors you can see we are given mean vectors so my question is why do you think that we are given mean vectors we could have been given the entire data set and we could have just uh, gone through the data points and um, computed the minimum distance out of that and perform the decision boundary equation and, th and that would have been it and why do you think that uh, we were given only mean vectors this is because uh, there are a couple of reasons I would say that we use mean vectors when we do pattern class classification so let us discuss them one by one first is central tendency representation this means that whenever we choose a mean in a pattern class it encapsulates or collects the 
vast characteristics of the classes into a single data object right so we are expecting the entire class to be represented by that single instance or that single mean value so this central uh, tendency which we are trying to achieve is only possible by using the mean vector so that is why we use mean in the pattern class next is dimensionality reduction so this part is important when the data set is quite large right and suppose if the data set contains around millions of data points or pattern vectors then classifying each vector with the decision boundary and trying to find out its minimum distance could be cumbersome and this we are doing for two pattern classes in actual reality there are like 10 pattern classes so then the order will be like um, some suppose n power 10 so, so n can be of anything like suppose n is a million so 10 raised to power 6 power 10 10 power 60 so you can see the huge number which we going we are going to deal if we are not using the mean vector right so it is not computationally feasible in a uh, polynomial time you can say so that is why we use the mean vectors we summarize the calculation instead of using the entire data set as i mentioned next is sensitivity to class distribution so suppose that um, the we took out the mean we are performing the classification and in future the uh, distribution changed somewhat so our decision boundary should change as well right we cannot stick to the same decision boundary and classify the data objects based on the previous distribution so in order to do that we will just recompute the mean vector so it will just point out that how much deviation from the previous mean it occurred and then we can basically change the decision boundary according to the change in uh, the mean of the classes so that is what is written here it's written with an example suppose one class is more spread suppose one class is uh, spread like this and another class is spread like this right so the mean vectors represent these differences accurately when we will see the mean vector it will be like this and like this so in both the cases the mean will be consolidating all the pattern vectors in each of the class so that is only possible if we took the mean right if we are taking any say random point like this and like this then we cannot draw the decision boundary where will we draw we will be like confused whether it, we will draw here or here we don't know so for that reason we are taking the mean vector so i hope it is clear now we move to the next part so now we come to the minimum distance classifier which is the topic so minimum distance classifier why do you think is called minimum there could have been many other names right minimum distance denotes the minimum since it classifies the new data points based on the minimum distances to the predefined centroid so whenever we have a new data object into the data set we are going to classify it with our decision boundary classifier based on the minimum of the distances to the predefined centroid this is the predefined mean which we are uh, which we had talked about uh, uh, a minute ago right so this is what minimum distance classifier inherently means so this is what it means now we come to a representation of that so suppose if this wasn't clear much then mathematically we can say that the class obtained will be will be the minimum of d1 d2 d3 up to dn these are the distances from the centroids of the classes right the pattern classes so among these whichever is the minimum suppose d3 is the minimum so the class will be c3 perfect now we come to the next part that is some uh, important features that you might consider before uh, calculating the decision uh, distance classifier minimum distance classifier so some features are such that they make the minimum distance classifier quite unique with respect to the other pattern classifiers out there so first among them is the computational efficiency because since we are only calculating the distance between the um, 
data point and the centroid so much of the computation which could have been done due to the other data points of a class are avoided right so that is why we are, we are computationally more efficient than other algorithms so other algorithms in this domain require training models with large data sets right there are models which have been optimized to do such uh, um, training but still they take more time than minimum distance classifier next is the assumption of feature independence so in minimum distance classifier the features that we uh, consider during the classification are considered separately while calculating the distances right so it will not be like there are three different features of suppose edges or um, uh, angle count or something so we will not gather all of these informations into one and calculate the distance no we will have the separate features and the distance associated to them will be uh, calculated separately and based upon the distance we will classify okay so that is how classification will be done and the third part is uh, same uh, like sensitive to data distribution so as and when the classes are well distributed suppose um, let me draw another uh, example like suppose the class is distributed in proper boundaries so this is a boundary this is a boundary so then our minimum distance classifier will perform very well it will just draw the decision boundary in the middle of these and it will classify if the data object lies here or here but suppose let me just erase this suppose we have a class say right like this so its mean will be somewhere here right or better somewhere here now suppose we have another class at this part right so in this case the mean will be somewhere here but as you can see that if the actual object lies around here then we are not able to tell where it basically classifies into whether it is in the green class or it is in the blue class why because the line which we will draw will be like this and we cannot say like if suppose the actual point which we are trying to say appears here then whether it is since both green and blue classes appear here so we cannot classify it whether it is in the blue class or in the green class so for irregularly shaped classes or that are not well separated we will not be using the minimum distance classifier so i hope this makes sense now we come to the next part which is the actual calculation of how we will draw the decision boundary so the mean vectors are listed here right so first thing is we will find the minimum distance of all the data points from the mean so that we will do just by simple euclidean norm euclidean measure you might be familiar with that so that we will find and finally um, with some calculations and proof we will reach to this equation let me know if you want me to uh, prove this derivation i will just prove that in a, some another video because it will unnecessarily make this video long so if you want me to prove this then just uh, write it in the comment section and i will do it in a, some separate video so this is the decision boundary uh, this is the decision equation uh, sorry this is the distance equation right for a particular pattern class uh, which is denoted by the mean vector mj and mj transpose for its transpose part and for all the data points basically in that class we will have this um, distance function right so once we are done with that since we are assigning unknown pattern x to the class with the highest d so the pattern class with the long, uh, largest value of the d that is the distance will be assigning a value pattern x right we do not know which actual class the 
pattern vector lies in so we will just assign it the value of x so then the decision boundary comes out to be di equals dj let us mark it as equation 2 and this as equation 1 so just rearranging this part we will get di x minus d j x equals 0 so then we will start putting the values from the question we are given here so this is 6.5 and 3.2 so those are written here and then minus half of this this is for the di x and this is for the dj of x so that we will do just we will uh, do the simple math and then we will get this equation right 4.1 x1 plus 1.7 x2 minus 23.12 let me know if the calculation is correct or not i have just calculated it so but i think it's correct so this was how we will calculate the decision boundary for two pattern classes using minimum distance classifier and uh, if you have any doubts or issues in this then feel free to reach out in the comment section below and that's been it hey there before you go i've got some fantastic content lined up for you over here we've got some videos and playlists you might enjoy but first if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video